Thank you so much. Uh, actually, this is my first time attending the Bayesia Lab Conference, but I did uh, all the courses maybe uh, more than uh, twice for each course, I'm sure. We had the pleasure of having Lionel here in Dubai uh, three times, if I'm not wrong, three times for uh, introductory and advanced courses um, as well. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a professor of mathematics. I teach at Zaid University in the Department of Math and Statistics, and I use Bayesian networks uh, in my research and in uh, applications as well. So uh, in this presentation, I will tell you, uh, I will present you with the model that we did. We, uh, we used by Bayesia to uh, model uh, the entrepreneurial intentions and attitudes among uh, Emirati University uh, students. We used Bayesia for this. Uh, just to give you an overview of the context, um, a couple of years ago, all universities in the UAE started offering uh, an introductory course in entrepreneurship and innovation because it was uh, uh, it was required by the Ministry of Education. Uh, it's the same course to all students in the UAE, private or governmental uh, institution. A couple of years after that, I think uh, even two years ago, a second course was added, and this course is about entrepreneurship and innovation, but within the major itself. So it's a different course from business, for example, to IT, to science, uh, and uh, as well. Uh, then uh, our university, which is a governmental university, built a huge, big, fancy entrepreneurial uh, center, and uh, they start developing programs. So, I mean, one of the... Uh, committee's curriculum, uh, review committee. And uh, I said, okay, since we are offering courses and programs, I want to know more about this. And I want to understand what are the factors that affect uh, the student's intention to start a business to help me propose uh, something and develop uh, courses and programs, maybe a training um, based on this. It, it's a fact that nowadays most countries are uh, giving priority to entrepreneurship for economic growth and innovation. And uh, uh, it's a fact also that economic growth in most advanced countries is driven by uh, SME, the small and the medium-sized enterprises, because they, they are really the backbone of any developing economy, driven innovation, employment, and investment as well. And that's why uh, most of the countries, they are trying to make the young entrepreneurs uh, the driving force for uh, economic through those uh, SME uh, uh, companies. So this is the idea behind why entrepreneurial um, intentions or attitude are important those days. There are uh, a few reports regarding entrepreneurship in the world. And they are recent, not more than 10 years. I looked at a couple of them. Uh, this morning, I received the new one from Guess. I didn't use Guess in my research. Uh, uh, the 2021 report just came out. It has now 58 uh, countries. It was less last year. I used, I went through the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Report 2020 because uh, it had the UAE for the last uh, maybe two reports on something like this, and I wanted to compare uh, the numbers. So in this report, it was stated that firms are more and more given importance and value in employees that have uh, entrepreneurship skills. The, Gen the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor uh, last year, 2020, included 50 countries, and they... Um, admitted and they found that most of the uh, companies and employers, they are really giving more value when they hire to people with the entrepreneurship skills. And they also found that 8% of employed adults in three countries, those three countries, they share the same number, the UAE, Australia, and um, UK. So 8% uh, of the adults employed in companies, they are also involved in entrepreneurial uh, activities like uh, proposing services, goods, uh, doing even business online as part of their employment or even outside their employment. Uh, the percentage was less than 1% in another 16 countries out of the 50 that were involved in the study. 
Uh, also about the UAE, they found that 39% of adults, they want to start a business in the next three years, which is not bad as a percentage. While 71% of the adults, they consider it easy to start a business in the UAE. And especially now, I believe that the percentage increased because there are a lot of, a lot of changes in laws, in laws and regulations to help people and to encourage people and even um, uh, foreign investors to come and invest here in the UAE. But the intention was only 13.7%. So from 71% to 13.7%, it's really low. In fact, 35, 35.1%, 30, yeah, it was 35.13%. They declared that they face the fear of failure, which is one of the risks of uh, starting uh, a business. So because of this, the entrepreneurial intention is really low. So we do believe in the importance of uh, entrepreneurship for the economy growth, and that's why we started this uh, research. So uh, the intention of starting a business is very important, and we believe the countries should uh, help in, uh, in implementing this culture and stimulating this culture, among especially the youth, and not on, wait till the university to start something uh, like this. So... So entrepreneurial intentions is one of the factors to measure the economic growth in countries. And this is according to um, a couple of uh, reports about uh, economic growth, like uh, the JAM, the GAS, and there is one uh, spirit as well. They are well-known uh, reports. So it's a key measure to the development of a country or to the potential entrepreneurs in a society. Where if you have a lot of people who are planning to start a business, means your economy is doing very well. So it comes from the cognitive process. What is cognitive process? It's uh, in psychology, it's what it serves to flow the beliefs and perceptions into the intent to act. So from your beliefs and your perceptions about something, you plan to act. So this is what we call intention. So uh, attitudes is a little bit different. I'll talk about it a little bit. So if we understand what is, uh, in, what is affecting the intention, we can help better increase the percentage of people who are um, keen to start a business if they have uh, what is needed. So starting a business is one of the planned behavior in, uh, uh, in psychology and uh, intended action. And that's why uh, we use uh, uh, models from psychology. So the first model that was uh, proposed to, um, let's say, to model intentions is uh, by um, uh, Shapiro in 1982. So this model is based on uh, Desirability, so means you desire to start a business and feasibility, it's feasible, it's possible. Uh, this was the first model. It has it started only with two factors. Then after that, more factors were added to this model, like um, the uh, propensity or the tendency to act. And also a couple of years ago, the, um, the role of society was added to this uh, model as well. It is still used, but a little bit less than the second model that I'm going to present you here, which is the theory of planned behavior. It was start. It started in 1988 by Erzan, and in his model, he believes that intention is affected by um, the desirability, feasibility, and what we call also the self-efficacy or the perceived behavioral control. So it's explained by those uh, three terms. I'll show you a graph here, then I'll tell you a bit. Let's see if yeah. So basically, this is the theory of planned behavior. Uh, in fact, there is no big difference between Shapiro and uh, the um, TPP, we call it. There is no big difference because the disability, which is in Shapiro model, is exactly the attitude that we have here in the uh, theory of planned behavior. The subjective norms is exactly the feasibility that we had in Shapiro model, except this one is a little bit different. The self-efficacy is available in the TPP, but not in the Shapiro model. 
So a lot of research use this and it's still used. They combine this with the structural equation models to add other factors that may affect uh, intentions and attitudes. But the problem, it's always linear. As you can see, you have here only factors that are affecting the intention. And we don't have nonlinear uh, relationship. Other studies start combining this, as I said, with the structural equation models to add more factors. Some of the factors that were included um, uh, were the family and friend support, the role model, and the obstacles, because when you plan to start a business, there are a lot of obstacles. They could be social, economic, or even from the society uh, itself. So we uh, looked at different uh, models and we looked for factors that were not included. And we thought of including the university and country university um, uh, opportunity feasibility. What does that mean? So if we are talking about... Uh, the uh, country, we are talking about uh, uh, what is there, the laws, the regulation, the strategies that are available to help them uh, start a business. Uh, actually, one of the um, proposal we made is to reduce the fees to uh, register a license to open a business. And uh, it, it happened. Now it's uh, almost for free to register uh, a license um, to start a business here in the UAE. So we also looked at the, uh, at, uh, the uh, university. Why university? Because it's really important. Uh, we couldn't uh, look at schools because we are working in university, so we could survey only the students uh, in the university. But we do believe if the university is providing the students with the right training, the right courses, and so on, it will help them overcome maybe this fear of failure and the obstacles and look for uh, uh, new ideas to start innovative, new innovative ideas to start uh, a business. So those are the two factors that we added to our um, uh, research. Of course, the uh, family uh, support was introduced before that in other research and uh, when we say, usually when we say family, we say it's family and uh, uh, friend support. So the hypothesis of the uh, theory of planned behavior are very simple, higher attitude, higher subjective norm, and higher self-efficacy will have a positive impact on the intention. So here we added those two. Of course, we added more factors. I'll tell you a little bit uh, about our factors. And we looked for, even if it can improve intention, but through a mediator, as we say in um, psychology. So what we did, is it working? So to find the factors, we run a survey. The survey was done as a cross-sectional survey among a random sample of 324 students from the same university, but two campuses, two different in two uh, Emirates. And most of the, uh, it's university for the locals. So it's only Emirati students who were part of this survey. They were aged between 17 and 35, enrolled in bachelor or master degree. 87 were female because this is a university. When it started, it started for female students, female Emirati students. But after that, they opened a few of the majors to the male. And that's why the big percentage was um, female students. The average age was uh, around 23 years with the standard deviation of three years. So it was, uh, it was, let's say, after the second and after the uh, ending the bachelor means uh, some students were in the master degree as well. Uh, most of the students were from the Emirates of Dubai because me and my uh, my co-authors are here in Dubai. So we, we used kind of... Uh, uh, tried to recruit our students to take the survey. And the second biggest percentage was from the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, where we have the other uh, big campus. Uh, all the other students were from the other different five uh, Emirates. So we have uh, representation from all um, Emirates uh, in the country. So our survey or uh, the, uh, the questionnaire had uh, three different um, 
part. The first one was about the uh, general questions, socio-demographic questions, even socio-economic questions, background information, the age, the gender, the marital statue, the education, the major, uh, the gender. We asked also about if uh, what they do because we have part-timers as well and if they are working as part-time full-time or if they are full-time students we also ask them about the their parent level of education and their parent work and the job sector as well to see later if we can use this information in finding uh, different factors the second part of the questionnaire it had questions related to background information on entrepreneurship and how they learned about entrepreneurship if they did. So most of them, they mentioned the course. A lot of them, especially those who were aged more than 25, they talked about the training in the center that started in the university a couple of uh, maybe maximum two year, one year and a half ago. And the last part, it had statements to measure the student's perception of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurship effect on individuals, on society, on the country, their attitudes as well. It was measured, the university um, entrepreneurial environment, the limitation of starting a business. And also we talked about the UAE entrepreneurial environment, um, the characteristic of behavior of an entrepreneur and the country yes we asked all those questions in each question students they had to rank or choose an answer on a Likert scale from one to five so it was straightforward so we made sure that all these statements were positively rewarded so like this to make it simple actually we um we translated this to Arabic, then back translation just for uh, validation. Then we ran the experiment. We chose students from last summer and the fall semester um, uh, because they were just uh, one after one. We had summer because we are online to answer the questionnaire. So then what we did, we had 24 uh, entry, no missing data at all. And the number of statements, if I'm not wrong, was 146. And we didn't have any missing data. We, uh, we had only one open question. Students start uh, talking about their experience. And we're going to use even uh, uh, data mining or text mining to study those uh, answers. So what we did, I used Bayesia. Actually, I have uh, someone with me who's uh, expert. He's prof a uh, professor of entrepreneurship. And he started looking at the data from his side and from my side. I'm not expert in this, but I tried to understand. I said, okay, let me run um, Bayesia. I use the Bayesian network. Then I use the uh, variable clustering. We used uh, unsupervised uh, learning because I didn't have any prior. And we just want to see what's going on. So here is just part of the network. Actually, if you can see here by the end, there are the variables that are independent. Then there is a big part. Then we said, okay, let's look. Uh, I looked at the clustering. Uh, it makes sense that some of the statements were together. We scheduled the meeting. We sat with another two professors and we start discussing this. And actually the one who was working using another uh, software, SPSS or SAS, was saying every time we ask question about the statement, he will say, wait, wait, I'll, I'll remove this and I'll add this. While for me, the answers were really uh, in front of me and I was giving him the answer straightforward without doing anything. So this was really a good starting point for us to decide what factors to consider and what statement. We validated this with the structural equation models and we had our factors. So we did, uh, I think, 10 factors. We did even more, but we didn't use all of them. So what I used in this um, research, I used intention, attitudes, self-efficacy, subjective norms, opportunity feasibility, university opportunity feasibility, the country opportunity feasibility, the family and friends support, the perceived risk, and the obstacles. I want to use similar what is already done, plus uh, the two addition university and country, just to be able to compare and to propose maybe uh, uh, policies to the policymakers. 
So after we did this, we got our um, uh, our scales. Each scale was formed from a different number of items. For example, the intention was formed, if I do remember, from seven statements. The uh, attitudes was formed from 10 statements. The, uh, the family and friend support, that was one statement because it was a direct question exactly saying family and friends. So we didn't need to come by. Here, if you see, for example, I remember the green one. So the green one, it has 11. It was the self-efficacy and so on. So after we did this, we obtained our Bayesian network. So we ignored all the, um, let's say, the, um, the sociodemographic variable. We didn't ignore them on purpose, but the first Bayesian network we obtained, it showed us that they are completely independent. The intention, the attitude, all those factors were independent. So we ignored them and we took only those statements, this part of the... Um, of the network. So as you can see here, it's really obvious not linear and we can read a lot of uh, connections here. So actually what we use here just, uh, I may have forget to say it, we used unsupervised learning because we didn't have any prior and we didn't want to impose anything. We went really to check the um, hypothesis without, without any uh, intervention from us. Uh, of course, we tried a couple of algorithms. Then we choose the one that um, minimized the MDF, the minimum description length score. And the, um, the algorithm that uh, did that was the uh, SOPEQ. And uh, it gave us this algorithm. We start reading. Of course, since we did... Um, we had statement and we did the average of the statement. We obtained what we call continuous variable. So we use the advantage of Bayesia, the R2 gen opt, to discriticize all the variables. And what is really nice is that we said, okay, if we don't like it, we're gonna change it. Each variable was discriticized into three bins. But when we looked, it made perfect sense that uh, below 2.4, uh, was the first bin between 2.4 and 3.5 was the second one that is considered moderate. And everything after 3.7 something was high. So we liked this distribution. We looked at the distribution. We like it. We kept it. We didn't change anything. So here we can read a lot, a lot, a lot from this uh, Bayesian network that is solely based on the data. We didn't use any expert here to tell us add this link or switch this link. Nothing, nothing. So here we can see that the attitudes, if you see it, is directly linked to intention. You have the self-efficacy and you have the opportunity feasibility. The, uh, the variable that is available in the other two models with its subjective norms is related to intention, but through a mediator, which is attitude. So it's a direct parent, but it's a, an ancestor to uh, intention. So after reading all those, we start even looking at the country and the university. Here we said, oh, it makes perfect sense that the country opportunity feasibility is a parent, a direct parent to the university opportunity feasibility. And it's also a parent to family and friend support. So after reading all those variables, here we looked at obstacles and uh, the risk. Of course, we do believe they are related, even though we found the research where they said, no, they are not correlated, but they were using, using only um, simple regression. So we do believe they are correlated because, uh, of course, if there are obstacles, there is a risk and it's the perceived risk or the feel of uh, failure. What we did after that is that we looked at the, uh, as you can see here, at the probability table, because we are interested in this note, that uh, I'm gonna call the target note, according to Bayesian. So it has three parents. I looked at the conditional probability table to have more information about how it's changing according to the three parents. So we noticed that 60.9% chance of high intention was given if the attitude was high means uh, more than four, 
Also, if the self-efficacy was moderate, means within the range, and the range, as I said before, was between 2.6 till 3.4, 3.5. And also, if the opportunity feasibility was high, more than 3.5. And this is really good because now we, we know what to do. We need to work on those three variables to improve. So we use the what if. Yeah. We use the what if analysis to know more. So what we did, we set the self-efficacy to 100%. Then I'll tell you later what's the meaning of setting this of setting this to 100% means what can we do to make it 100%? So the intention target, which is uh, high, which is more than uh, 3.75, actually increased from 23.6 to 39.9, which is not bad. Then we looked at the effect of attitude using the if uh, what analysis again. And we noticed it when the attitude is set at 100%, means um, all the students have a positive attitude, a high positive attitude. The intention increased also from 23.6 to 43.4. So it has even more effect than the self-efficacy. Then we looked at the subjective norm. And we set it also to the high level. The high level was more than uh, 3.7. And we noticed that the attitude, because it's a direct descendant of uh, subjective norm, it increased from 41 to 91%, which is really huge. Then the intention followed this and it increased from 23.6 to 40.5. So then we run... Uh, analysis to see what's the most um, uh, probable explanation for this. And we found that what to be the intention to be really high, we read those numbers, as you can see here, the attitude above for self-efficacy between, then we try to interpret this in terms of low and moderate. So in other terms, to have a high intention to start a business, the, the students, they require a high level of attitudes also for the subjective norms because it's high. What else? The obstacles, but the obstacles in the other uh, way around uh, means negative. Perceived risk, family and friend support. But for the self-efficacy, it's moderate. If we have moderate, means an average between 2.6 and 3.4, it will be more than enough to have a high uh, intention. So when I say an average of 3.4, it's out of five because all the questions were uh, between one and five. <laughs> As I said, as we were interested only in the intention as variable of interest, we run uh, by Isia, we run what we call the local analysis with the target uh, node. And we were specific, which shows that intention is high, means the average of answers was more than uh, 3.57. So it gave us in this, as you can see, in this descending order, the variables according to their relative contribution to high intention. And as you can see, it started from attitudes, if I'm not wrong, opportunity feasibility, self-efficacy, and subjective norm. I can't see very well. It's written small for me. That's why I don't look uh, at the screen itself. And even big, I cannot see it, sorry. But I think it's attitudes opportunity, feasibility, subjective norm, then the last one is self-efficacy. So this is the direct effect on the uh, intention as well. It gave us the same, uh, the same answer as the local um, analysis with the target. So we know what to work on. Following this, we have those more, uh, four, three most uh, variables, including the attitude, which is the highest one because it's a direct uh, uh, a direct parent to intention. So we use those answers to try to compare with uh, what is available in the, uh, in the studies and also to come up with recommendations and maybe policy implications. So as uh, you've seen, 
we did more than linear relationship, but we found exactly the same hypothesis like the theory of plant behavior, uh, which, uh, which is um, uh, intention, subjective norm, and self-efficacy. So highly, intention is highly affected by those uh, three variables, which is exactly the same hypothesis we've seen in the, um, sorry, in the theory of plant behavior. Then the other one we obtained is the, uh, the, the uh, what is called the Shapiro model. It talks about the uh, subjective norm. And that was exactly the same result as Shapiro uh, and Sokol model. So using Bayesian network, we were able to confirm or validate hypothesis and even add more. Why? Because we were able to include uh, factors or variables that were not included before. And there is no hypothesis about those factors, like the obstacle, the perceived risk, and uh, they are connected, which is not the case in the one or two research we found. But as I said before, they use only linear regression to see if there is a relationship and only Pearson correlation that was really weak. And we do believe they should be connected because since the multiple risk faced by entrepreneurs and other risks, other obstacles, they be magnified by same or other factor. That's why we do believe that uh, they should be connected and the Bayesian network gave us this uh, result directly. Also, one of the other uh, results is the self-efficacy because we said it's enough to have moderate self-efficacy, even though in our study, when we did the, the average of the self-efficacy, it was a little bit low comparing to the other uh, variables. So we said, if we try to improve the intentions, we need to work on the self-efficacy. Uh, we are proposing um, that we empower the youth or the students, not even university. We can start this uh, early on in high schools, even in schools. We can uh, help them, give them the skills how to prep. We repair a business plan, uh, running and financing a business, looking for opportunities, knowing the research technique and threats, which is very, very important. Uh, not all courses we looked at cover this part, especially knowing the research technique related to the market. Uh, also having a good understanding of intellectual property, which is um, the trend those days, the equity finance, and just being alert to opportunities. And we do believe that, um, uh, let's say, uh, a collaboration between universities and uh, companies may make this possible. So this is one of the uh, suggestions we ask is to add skills to the courses. And also we are doing it through, um, through the training, the entrepreneurship uh, uh, center to train uh, students on those skills. Uh, what else? So we talked about, I talked about the self-efficacy. I talked about the uh, collaboration between university and uh, companies as well, because it's really important and it will increase the student's exposure to business ideas and opportunities. Also, since we've seen in our model that in this society, and I do believe those models, they are different from one society to another society. Uh, maybe a factor that we didn't include is um, uh, culture, but I don't know how to, we haven't, um, it's very difficult to find the measure to measure this because uh, entrepreneurship, um, attention or uh, attitude in Europe is different from here. Uh, entrepreneurs are different. And I do believe the culture has um, has a fact and it's playing a role in this. Uh, what else? I'm not sure if I still have time. Maybe two minutes. Okay, thank you. So we do believe that countries should be, should have really, uh, let's say, a push toward improving all those factors. So since family and friends have a positive impact on those youth, on their subjective norms, 
they should be involved. They should be involved in programs that are designed specifically by universities, by experts, and other entrepreneurial youth hubs. There are plenty of them to enhance those youth entrepreneurship attitude because it's really important. Uh, being separated from the family and friends and starting a business is very difficult. It has a role. So we do believe in this role. So the government uh, also should take the lead in this, uh, in improving uh, the education, in enhancing the entrepreneurship education, in making it matching what is happening now in the market and economics. And it's not only... Yes, we may define entrepreneurship, we may define innovation, but if we are not doing things, if we are not looking at what's happening in the market, it's still only um, uh, only words that we are not applying. So the skills should be learned and also applied um, in, uh, in entrepreneurship uh, possibilities, something like this. Uh, so what we proposed is to do, uh, students are doing their internship in the um, com in companies or in the center. So even if there is no project of starting a read because they give them really easy, um, easy things to do and it has nothing to do with starting a business. So we they play a role. They take uh, a role, they play as they are starting a business. And actually after running this for two semesters, a couple of those role play uh, projects ended up with business ideas and they are running now as full business, which is really good. We do believe in the role of education and it should start at an early stage because it has a big impact of um, working on the attitude and the self-efficacy. And uh, I may stop here at my conclusion. So Bayesian Networks helped me to understand the relationship between the different factors without being expert at all at all in this uh, field. And it showed me how they are correlated, how they are affecting the intention. And if I change something, how it will affect the variable that I'm interested in, which is the intention and the attitude. It helped me also to understand this let's say this indirect relationship, it's not only the parent that is changing the value of the intention like attitude, but also there is indirect relationship that is affecting uh, the intention variable. So it helped me get to grasp and understand really how the model is working and to validate those new hypotheses that we um, we proposed without any idea. So in fact, in the beginning, we had variables, we said, but this will affect this, but how we don't know through which mediator we don't know. So the Bayesian network gave us the answer to all those uh, questions. And it was the biggest advantage of using Bayesia rather than using uh, the generic uh, Shapiro or the uh, theory of plant behavior just to have linear relationship. Uh, so we come up with a few ideas. We applied them. Actually, they worked uh, very well in the center of entrepreneurship. And those results, we gave them, and uh, they can be used, of course, by professionals and academics who are more expert than me, to propose more training courses and uh, programs, and also to come up with the policy. The government, usually, they, uh, they listen to what uh, universities are telling them uh, here and we are pushing toward the collaboration, more collaboration between universities and um, and industry because uh, they have the leading role in uh, improving this opportunity feasibility. Without this bridge between university and industry, we don't think we can uh, do a lot. Uh, of course, uh, our study had some limitations. As I said, we chose those specific variables just to be able to compare to what's available in the market. And uh, the sociodemographic were independent, so we didn't have to waste time and run regression and uh, all this um, work they do in the traditional method. But we have a lot of other factors that we did not include because 
We don't know yet about the relationship, like the skills. We still have around um, maybe another 15 factors, uh, skills, motivation, innovation. The education itself as courses, we didn't include it. We included just the skills they learned as a part of the uh, self-efficacy as it's defined. And of course, the environmental and economic factors. This last point was proposed by um, an expert uh, who looked at our uh, research from the um, World Forum. And they invited us, if we add the environmental and economic factor, to represent this um, during the next meeting in March 2022. I think it will be in uh, Egypt. And uh, that's it. Thank you for this opportunity. If you are interested, I'll be more than happy uh, to tell you more. If you have questions, I'm here and uh, I'm looking for people to work with.